హలో నమస్తే వరకం బాంబ్ర దిస్ ఇస్ రమిత్ అండ్ వెల్కమ్ టు మై ప్రెసెషన్ మార్జిన్ ఇన్ టౌన్ రో పార్ట్ టూ లెట్ అస్ కంటిన్యూ అవర్ డిస్కషన్ ఫ్రమ్ వేర్ వి లెవ్ అ గూగ్లీ now we have financed a term loan of rupees 85 lakhs with a margin of 25% for scarf holding materials this is mainly used for construction of buildings the loan was yet to be released when the promoter made an advance of 2 lakhs to the vendors through his current account maintained with us this was to be considered as margin at a later stage he came with the first release request of 3 lakhs we did not collect the margin this time since he has already paid 2 lakhs upfront he was so happy next time he came with a second payment request of 7 lakhs where he computed his margin on his own as discussed in the next slide now this i call it a reverse sweep let us quickly take a look at what the customer presented before me amount invested so far by the customer is 2 lakhs bank release made so far is 3 lakhs present payment request is of 7 lakhs so margin till date should be 25 lakhs of 10 lakhs that is rupees 2.5 lakhs since he has already paid 2 lakhs we have to collect balance amount of 50000 rupees only now i asked in my earlier presentation what is your opinion on the above calculation submitted by the party whether this this seems apparently correct right but no there is a catch the right answer will be payment made to vendor started with the advance payment made by the promoter you remember he made an advance payment of 2 lakhs right so the earlier releases were 2 lakhs where the margin of the promoter was 100% and bank finance was nil so the overall margin in the project that the promoter maintained at that time was 100% total payment was 2 lakhs in the second release the term loan release was 3 lakh promoter's margin was nil release margin for this particular release was also nil so the overall margin will be 2 lakhs that the promoter earlier invested divided by 2 plus 3 that is the total disbursement made in the project so far till the second release so this will come to 40 percent the total payment made was made was 5 lakhs only now the present position overall release made to the vendor so far is 5 lakhs present payment request is 7 lakhs margin required from the promoter is 25 percent of 7 plus 5 lakhs which is 3 lakhs right margin brought by the promoter so far is 2 lakhs so friends how much he need to provide the margin right now it is 3 minus 2, 1 lakhs and not 50,000 only. So this is the right answer. I hope you like the case study. So let us move on to what are the things you will learn in this part 2 presentation. We have already covered what is the margin. Now you will learn the importance of analyzing sources of fund. Then you will also learn about differentiating between equity or capital and the unsecured loan. Now we will start our discussion with the importance of analyzing sources of fund. Before we start our discussion, we have to first understand what is meant by a sources of fund. For that purpose, I have displayed a sample Lilliput balance sheet. Now you observe carefully, liabilities are the sources. They are listed on the left hand side and asset that is the users are always listed on the right hand side. This is a standard balance sheet. Now the sources are used to create the assets. That's the concept. Here, what are the sources in the balance sheet? Firstly, it is the equity or capital that is promoter's own money. The reserve and surplus that is mostly accumulated by the profit earned by the company. Yes, there are other bifurcations of reserve and surplus, but I'm not going into that details. These two club together will form the net worth of the company. There is also something called long term liabilities under which this unsecured loan and term loan from bank will come. Since we are discussing only about term loan, so this current liability, current asset, non-current asset, 
we will not discuss in this presentation. So let them disappear. Now, what are the importance of sources of fund? It is important, it's important on the economic viability of the project, whether the project will be economically viable, whether the company will be able to arrange the funds necessary to infuse and make the construction to purchase the machineries and etc. It is important in order to understand whether there will be any abrupt discontinuation of the project. We have to avoid this. There should not be any discontinuation of the project. Any discontinuation in the project will mean cost overrun, time overrun, etc. Ensuring promoters have their own skin in the project. Friends, we all are bankers. We are not meant to run the business. The businessman or the company has to do that job. Now, if you think of a situation when promoters have not put in their own money, they are doing the business only in bank's money, naturally their interest will go lesser. So, if you can make them to put their own skin or own money in the project, it's only then they will have interest to make it a success. We have to avoid becoming the owner of the project or the company. We are bankers and we will happily leave as bankers. You can't imagine yourself in a situation where you suddenly become an owner of a dairy farm with 10-15 buffaloes and cows and you don't know how to handle the business. So that was about the sources of fund and its importance. Now let's, let's move on to the next topic. It is equity or capital versus the unsecured loan. This difference is prominent only in case of private limited companies. In case of partnership, in case of proprietorship, not much difference, there is not much difference. This equity and unsecured loans are different categories in case of private limited companies only. You must remember that. This equity or capital is company's own source of fund, generally contributed by the promoters or the shareholders, proprietors, partners, and some cases by other companies as well. Friends, I repeat, please remember that a company can get its equity or capital from other company as well. A company is permitted to invest in other company. These are interest-free liabilities and they have to file with register of companies, that is ROC, register of companies regarding their position of equity and capital. Unsecured loans are long-term loans, liabilities in the balance sheet of the company or promoters, from promoters, partners, friends and relatives. A company can borrow funds from other source, from sources other than banks. It could be its own promoters or partners, friends and relatives or other body corporates as well. They might be interest bearing and there is no need to file an ROC for this. There is no need to inform the register of companies regarding unsecured loan. That's the main advantage why the promoters always love unsecured loan, which I will discuss in the next slide. The bankers, we as a banker, always prefer equity. The question is why? Once the company brings some equity, it is always difficult for the company to withdraw the same from the system. You have to conduct an ordinary shareholder meeting. You have to inform the register of company. And there are n number of uh, formalities that you have to perform before you can actually withdraw the equity from the company. I repeat, all this discussion are regarding private limited companies only. That's why we bankers always love private limited companies. In case of partnership, proprietorship, there is no such discipline. Nothing is available. Companies at 2013 will always give you that strength that you can actually sue the directors if they do not obey the Companies Act 2013. It's an act passed in the parliament. So these are all described in that act. We can cross check the amount with the information in Ministry of Corporate Affairs website that is MCA website. I will give the description in my link of how to check a company's information in MCA website. So you can get a satisfaction that whatever is displayed in the balance sheet or whatever the company is informing you that they have actually filed with Ministry of Com Corporate Affairs and remember, if that gives any wrong declaration in this MCA website, 
they are liable to be punished under Companies Act 2013. Infusing equity in a company will always improve the debt equity ratio and the TOL TNW ratio. Now, this debt equity ratio and the TOL TNW ratio forms the benchmark while assessing your term loan. So, any improvement in D ratio and TOL TNW will always give a comfort to the banker that yes, the company is more interested to do the business in his own money. Now, the question is promoters always prefer unsecured loan. The question is why? They can easily withdraw it from the company. That is one of the main reasons. If they they need not inform the register of the company or they need not inform, they need not update the details in the ROC. So they can easily withdraw the unsecured loans. There is no registration cost involved for bringing the money. In order to increase the equity of the capital, you have to pay some amount to the register of companies. Likewise, you, you if you friends, if you purchase some land building etc some fixed asset you have to go to the register office and register it in your name there you have to pay some money to the government right even if you purchase a car or vehicle you have to go to the rto and register the vehicle in your name right likewise in case of a company which is a body corporate you have to pay to the register of companies to modify any information already filed with register of companies now, what are the precautions you must take while considering unsecured loan as margin or unsecured loan in your system? You have to take a notarized affidavit from the company that unsecured loan will not be withdrawn during the currency of the loan. Whosoever is giving unsecured loan to the company, it is always better to take guarantee of that person or the company. I repeat, the guarantee of the person or the company who is giving unsecured loan if it is available to you you can save yourself up to great extent it will do a lot of good to you because on a later date they cannot say that i didn't know unsecured loan if proposed to be brought from relatives or other company we need to verify their net worth statement or afs and uh, and ascertain their capacity now, for the purpose of borrowing, the promoters or the directors have already submitted, will already submit their own net worth statement, their own asset liability statement, the statement of the borrowing company, the balance sheet of the borrowing company will be available to you. But if they want to bring the unsecured loan from a different third party, you must tell them to submit the net worth statement of the third party or the audited balance sheet of the company from where unsecured loan will come. This will help you to assess whether they will be in a position to bring the unsecured loan, whether they are in a position to lend some money to the company which you are financing. So friends, with that, I conclude my this set of presentation in part two. Uh, very soon, we will meet in the part three of the presentation. Thank you. Goodbye.